Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about the poem Hide and Seek by Vernon Scannell. I'll explain the meaning related to this poem as it appears in part 3 of the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. Now do bear in mind that in contrast to part 1 of the anthology which featured only non-fiction texts and part 2 which was a mix of fiction and short stories and poems, part 3 of this anthology exclusively features poems alone so in this video I'll highlight key language and literary devices used in the poem and you'll learn how to analyse it. So let's get started. Now what I will do is read parts of this stanza and bear in mind in terms of the structure it's just one long stanza so I'll stop and pause after they try the lane, explain and analyse elements of this first half of the stanza before continuing. So let's begin. Call out, call out loud. I'm ready, come and find me. The sacks in the tool shed smell like the seaside. They'll never find you in this salty dark, but be careful that your feet aren't sticking out. Wiser not to risk another shout. The floor is cold. They'll probably be searching the bushes near the swing. Whatever happens, you mustn't sneeze when they come prowling in. And here they are whispering at the door. You've never heard them sound so hushed before. Don't breathe. Don't move. Stay dumb. Hide in your blindness. They're moving closer. Someone stumbles, mutters. The words and laughter scuffle and they're gone. But don't just come out just yet. They'll try the lane. So we'll pause there for now. Now, the title is really interesting because essentially what the title does is it's referring to a very infamous childhood game, Hide and Seek, where some of uh, the children hide whilst one child seeks. So, of course, here in this instance in the poem, what we're getting a description of is one particular child who's very intent on winning in this game and how they hide out. Now, the opening two phrases, call out, call out loud. This repetition of call shows the excitement of this particular child that we focus on. I'm ready, come and find me. Now these exclamatory sentences build up our anticipation of this game as we're seeing it through the lens of this child. Now this child chooses a tool shed and we learn the sacks in the tool shed smell like the seaside and the sibilance here, sacks, smell and seaside is used to really show the and to emphasise the atmosphere of the place that this child has chosen to hide themselves in. And the simile like the seaside is really really powerful because it's again using more sensory imagery to show just how vividly the place that the child has chosen as their hiding spot smells and even looks because of course also we learn that it's quite dark. Now the child is really excited and the speaker states they'll never find you in the sort of dark and the term they'll never. This is hyperbole again showing the narrator's almost childlike voice and they're echoing this excitement that this child feels in possibly winning this game because they've chosen such a good hiding spot. Moreover the second person pronoun you puts us in the position of the child as they're hiding in this dark tool shed. Moreover, in line four, the imperative voice, but be careful that your feet aren't sticking out. What this shows is it highlights almost the childlike worries that this child has in terms of being discovered in this tiny tool shed that they're hiding in. Of course, the tool shed is so small that if they're not careful, their feet could poke out from behind or rather beneath the tool shed. So this child is being exceptionally careful and the imperative sentence is almost somebody outside, the, the narrative voice is outside and they're telling the child, oh, be careful. And they're giving them all of this advice and how to win this game. Now in line six, the floor is cold. Now this declarative sentence highlights how the child has paused and is extremely still. And also it highlights just how uncomfortable this hiding place is, but of course it's showing just how intent this child is on winning. Now the caesurea or caesura after the floor is cold makes us pause and it reflects the child staying really still. Moreover, there's a lot of enjambment used here, so searching and after happens as well. And what the enjambment does in this instance is it speeds up the pace of the poem, adding to the anticipation and the excitement that this child feels as they're hiding. Moreover, in line eight, the speak or the narrative voice states, you mustn't sneeze. And what this shows is this child who's hiding is almost afraid to breathe so that they don't get caught. Furthermore, the children, or rather the child that is searching for them, and of course it's interesting that they mention they, so it seems like more than one child is searching for this child who's hiding, they come prowling in. Now the other children who are searching are depicted like predators coming perilously close to this child who's hiding. Moreover, they're whispering at the door and the onomatopoeia here emphasises the stealthy movements of these people. 
Now, in line 10, the speaker states, you've never heard them sound so harsh before. So the, the children who are looking for this one particular child, they are passing very close to the tool shed and they're sounding really, really silent. And then on top of that, later on, someone stumbles. Now the sibilance is used here, which is increasing the stakes and winning the game becomes so crucial to this child. They're hiding the breath. They're really, really fearful and the sibilance adds to this sense of fear. Moreover, in line 11, don't breathe, don't move. Now, these imperative short sentences and the alliteration of the plosive sounds, duh, in many ways, what this does is it's shown this child is really, really fearful. They have put so much on the line to try and win this game. Moreover, the speaker, the nar narrative voice states, hide in your blindness. And what this shows is that the spot that this child has chosen to hide in is extremely dark, almost as if they have been made blind as they are sh they've shut this tool shed and cut out all the lights. Now, the child hears the words and laughter scuffle and they're gone. Now, there's a sudden shift in tempo. So these children, the people who are looking for this child, they've moved from being very hushed to having lots and lots of noise, the words and the laughing and the scuffling, and then they run away. Now, this sudden shift in tempo from extreme silence to loud laughing and running shows that these children have in many ways gone to maybe chase elsewhere for this child or to look elsewhere for this child. However, the speaker, the narrative voice says, but don't come out just yet. So this child carries on hiding. Now let's continue. And then the greenhouse and back here again. They must be thinking that you're very clever, getting more puzzled as they search all over. It seems a long time since I went away. Your legs are stiff. The cold bites through your coat. The dark, damp smell of sand moves in your throat. It's time to let them know you're the winner. Push off the sacks, uncurl and stretch. That's better. Out of the shed and call out to them. I've won, here I am. Come and own up, I've caught you. The darkening garden watches, nothing stirs. The bushes hold their breath, the sun is gone. Yes, here you are, but where are they who sought you? Now, this final part of the stanza is quite poignant because we learned that after all of this child's efforts, yes, they do win, but it's almost a hollow victory because these children, when they were laughing and running off, they run off and continued another game. So there's a sense of abandonment as the poem ends. Now, in line 15, and then the greenhouse and back here again. So the polysyndeton here shows that the child is intent on winning. They are imagining how all the children are looking. They're looking around, looking around, and this is shown through the polysyndeton. In the following line, they must be thinking you're very clever. Now, this intensifier gives us a sense of the childlike voice, just how keen this child is to win. And of course, this shows that this is almost like a very childlike game. And this child is so, so intent on winning. Moreover, the mention of clever and which rhymes with over in the following line. Now, this rhyming couplet emphasizes the child's glee at hoping to win. They feel a lot of glee at choosing the perfect hiding spot. However, we learn, it seems a long time since they went away. So the child has been waiting and waiting and waiting and time has gone. It's gone from being daytime to nighttime. Now, the term a long time, what this shows is the unbearable length of waiting time. The time for this child is even more elongated than normal. Moreover, in line 19, the cold bites through your coat. This personification of cold biting through the child's coat emphasizes not only is it really uncomfortable hiding in this dark tool shed, now they become doubly uncomfortable because they're freezing. Moreover, the dark, damp smell of sand and the dark, damp the alliteration highlights the oppressive atmosphere of this tool shed. Moreover, this sibilance here, smell of sand, and what this does is it helps us as readers vividly sense the coarseness of the sand that surrounds this child in this tool shed. Now, in line 19 and 20, the your legs are stiff, the cold bites through your coat, the dark, damp smell of sand moves in your throat. Now, the syndeton that's used here emphasizes that this child has been in the dark for a very long time. Moreover, the child then pushes off the sacks, uncurl and stretch. Now, these imperative sentences are again the narrative voice interjecting and telling the child, okay, you can come out now, you can unravel all of these things and open the tool shed. Then the exclamatory sentence, that's better, shows how excited but also relieved the child is to have won this game. Now we then hear the child directly, I've won, here I am, come and own up, I've caught you. Now this is the child's direct speech we hear for the first time directly from this child who feels really triumphant that they've won this game. 
However, this is almost a letdown because in line 25, there's only the darkening garden there to celebrate this very hollow victory with this child and the bushes hold their breath. The personification that's used here, the personification of the garden and the bushes shows just how silent and isolated the area is and how the other children have essentially abandoned this child. Moreover, the caesurea here creates a volta after the darkening garden watches. This volta highlights that this child has been abandoned by their friends and now it's completely dark and they've been forgotten about. Moreover, this darkness and silence is emphasized, nothing stirs, and this simple sentence emphasizes the terrifying moment that this child realizes they have been abandoned. Moreover, the darkness is emphasized, the sun is gone, and the pathetic fallacy here emphasizes the pain that this child must feel at abandonment. Now, the poem ends with a rhetorical question, but where are they who sought you? And what this rhetorical question does is it emphasises the fe bitter feeling of abandonment that this child feels. It's gone from being a really fun game, one which the child has felt like they've won, to actually it disintegrating into the other children abandoning this child and then now out on a cold tool shed in a garden that's quite silent. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do note that we have an in-depth extensive course covering all the texts and poems in parts one, two and three of the anthology. So make sure you do sign up for this course for explanations on all these texts, as well as model answers. Also, do check out our website, which is www.firstratetutors.com, where you can find plenty of English revision worksheets, model answers and online courses covering all the major English syllabuses, including Edexcel, AQA and IGCSE. Thanks so much for listening.